It's blinking because it's working. Fuck yeah, baby. Dun, dun, You're dun, my dun, man. Dun, 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 dun. We'll just keep it over there. And I'll... This yeah. is hilarious, dude. You should have him walk around with this before the show. show. Yeah. Two. Two. Well, I was just water. about to take a piss. You really want me to go? <laughs> <laughs> you want to kind of make sure you point it down so it gets people yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, but not too far down. But all also, it's the Martinez, the Martinez cam. <laughs> and we got all this funky, you know, blue duct tape and shit remember. all over. What's that? Too. Now you can get as drunk as you want, and you'll just have a, you know, chronicle. You won't, you'll be like, what did I do last night? I don't need to worry about remembering. Like yeah. Brain, yeah, we're on a bowl. You got that? Is there a, is there a steady cam on it? Because I plan on getting pretty drunk. It's super steady. <laughs> is it? You could go like snowboarding right now. Yeah, it's a special model. It's a stagger. All right, we are set up. Yeah, go for so, money. You can go jog down a hill. It's got image stabilizer in it. So how do we stop this? Oh, uh, this button right here. Yeah. It's going to be a solid two. Well, welcome everybody to Whitaker Tales, volume number four, the Whitaker Block Party. A lot of wing nuts around here. Nothing should probably go wrong tonight. But hey, I would like to thank some of our sponsors. Uh, we got the grit, Nikos, we need Nikasi, and also we have Taco War, and we also have the Sweet Life. So anyway, that's what we got going on, and uh, so tonight should be uh, a very nice evening. Um, back in the 90s, things sort of like fell apart a little bit, there were a lot of infighting, and people were sort of whitey tighties and really uptight and everything and uh, so a lot of people bailed out and uh, but then 2000s came along and then all of a sudden people were talking about laughing and loving and fucking and drinking liquor and uh, sort of maybe a different way to approach a revolution so uh, we're going to show a little video up top and, uh, and then after that we'll introduce the top secret guest host thank you for coming and help the damn revolution come put the last love, fucking drink liquor. And help make a revolution. I'm here to last love, fucking drink liquor. And help the damn revolution come put the last love, fucking drink liquor. And maybe make a revolution. Just kind of cruise around, mob the rest of the, somebody else's. Well, you know, if, yeah, right? If you guys, let's have somebody come up. Okay, okay, okay. So if you guys aren't into this EWC thing, just, uh, like, okay, I'm not going to pursue it at all, and I don't want anything to do with any after party, and I'm well, I'm going down It's been very stressful, and a lot of things have been going on, and a lot of times we don't get along, but in the end, it's going to be a really cool block party, and. So tell me about it. Where, where is it? Um, it's on West 3rd in the Whitaker, uh -huh. between Van Buren and Adams, uh -huh. in between the Nikasi parking lot, one stage will be there. Can you talk a little louder? <laughs> Sorry, I'll just keep going. Go ahead. Well, uh, this is a... Uh, a secret meeting, uh, and we are discussing the Whitaker Block Party, which is not a secret, and we hope you all will come. That'll be August 9th, and uh, let's take a look. We're going to have some food vendors. We have about four stages, maybe around 30 bands, I think. Uh, art cars, fire dancing. Um, I hear there's a misting tent. I don't know. There's a raffle. Misting tent. I don't know. The art raffle, uh, some art auction, I believe, and uh, uh, a lot of the local businesses is here. I'm really excited about it too, so they want to welcome you out, I'm sure. It's so the Whitaker's known for anarchists. You guys a bunch of anarchists down here? Is that well, what you <laughs> uh, No comment. <laughs> a shit ton of stuff on the north side of the street. I mean, I'm, I'm not opposing you, but it might be uh, an okay 
So we're okay. stuck. So what's going on behind us here, Chris? <laughs> a bunch of people pretending as if they're an informal government trying to influence everyone else in the neighborhood to do exactly what they want, listen to the music that we dictate, and give us our money, gifts, you know, and I guess a little bit of respect. It's the island of misfit toys. A uh, lovely bunch of... Uh, uh, individuals that have uh, really strong love for this community. I'm glad to see it happen. So, cheers. <laughs> The Whitaker. I started to drink of my wine The convent's hanging on the wall It's frozen over time Oh, I marvel at the pity I will horror and despair In the wake of the Medusa The moon shed a tear Sit my friends and listen Put your glasses down Sit my friends and listen To the voices of your drowned Sit my friends and listen Put your glasses down Sit my friends and listen to the voices of your drown. underwritten by warehousers so <laughs> it's gonna be $15 to get in oh, right. we're gonna make everything right. out of non-recyclable yeah. hardware that's that's right. free braces we're, we're done all all it's never possible that's right, right. That's and right. it's gonna be it. the Miller Lite block party right. we're all going to hell anyway <laughs> there you go <laughs> Communication can be difficult. I would say for the most part we pull it off. This whole thing is organized chaos at its best. But we always manage to have a lot of fun. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Woo! Now don't get stuck. Come on and fuck it up. Like the Perry Cold Refrigerator. Pull out your happy cuns and shoot them up. Kill them all like the Terminator. Come on, do it now. But you're your happy cow. Walk around giving beef to everyone. Oh, who gives a shit? They all deserve it. This is the end of the happy song. Oh. <laughs> Take him away, I'm a naughty, bruised, and mean, and brown banana. 
So did you buy these flowers, Vilo? No, we made them. Yeah? You sell any of these suckers? Um, yeah, we've sold like 10 maybe. Really? There's some down there too. So how much money you got? Um, I'm not sure right now. Can I borrow it from you? So you guys been selling more uh, flowers? Uh -uh. Not that many. No, not really. Really? Uh -uh. <laughs> so what do you guys think about the Whitaker Block party? It's fun! Really? Awesome! Anybody been bothering you, bugging you? you uh -uh. Know, maybe to Only Dresden. Ass? Only Dresden. Dresden's and we here? Saw, yeah, across the street That's and all over here. Really? I know, right? It's the old Swiss blade that turns into a comb. I would use that on my mustache. <laughs> Me! Yes! 552-631. Five, five, Somebody named Amy. Amy. Oh! Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Party. 2009. 2009, that's right. Yeah. August 1st? August 1st. August 1st, man. It's officially summertime. It is, man. Fuck around. And it's been the ruins of many a poor boy. And God, I know who I am one. <laughs> Video history of the Whitaker Block Party, and uh, just a short little snippets. And I know on the flyer and the poster and everything, I was talking about a top secret guest host and all that because Elliot couldn't do it. And then I was started looking for some other host. I was trying to get Jacqueline McClure, who kicked ass. Shut up! Don't no, don't use that megaphone, dude. <laughs> So, it, ah, ah, okay, but Jacqueline McClure couldn't do it, and then Andrew with the megaphone wanted to do it, but he never shuts the hell up, so he doesn't listen, and then the Ampy wanted to do it, and he's times 10 of what Andrew is, right? 
So thank God Elliot said, called me up and he said, you know, I got to do this. This is in my wheelhouse. I cut my teeth on the Whitaker Block Party. So here he is, uh, the original, the one and only, Elliot Martinez. Hey everybody, welcome to the Whitaker Tales Volume 4 on the eve uh, of the 13th annual Whitaker Block Party. Can you believe it's been 13 years? Look at that. I can't believe it either. There are teenagers alive today who were conceived during the block party. Wrap your mind around that for a second. But what is the Whitaker Block Party and how did it come to be? Well, we're going to find out today. Uh, part of Wh Whitaker Tales, our ongoing series uh, on the Oral Histories Project, uh, which I'm glad to be a part of, thanks to uh, Tim Lewis and, of course, my wife, Emily West. Let me get comfortable. There you go. All right. Well, the Whitaker Block Party, 13 years ago, I was not a part of it. 12 years ago, I was, though. And uh, I've, seen it, uh, I've seen it get bigger, uh, for better or worse. And uh, I'm excited to be here today with some of my old friends, and we're going to talk about uh, the history of the Whitaker Block Party and how it came to be. Uh, so first, I'd like to uh, welcome my first guest tonight, uh, he's the organizer of this year's block party and, uh, and, and the originator and co-conspirator of the block party. Let's, talk about, let's bring up uh, Chris Gadsby, please. There he is. Welcome to the show. Have a seat. <laughs> That's your mic. You, get, you don't have to turn it on. It's already on. I think... Oh, we can't hear you just yet. Well, don't worry about it. It, it takes a minute to warm up. All right. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I oh, appreciate it. It's a pleasure it. to have you on the show And today. this is not an advertisement for the Whitaker Block Party. No, this it is isn't. Whitaker Tales. This is Whitaker Tales. Uh, I'm going to differentiate between the two. But I do want to talk about the Block Party. What is it? The, the Block Party was, or is, well, actually it's changed dramatically from it the sure beginning. Has. It was a creation of a bunch of friends who had gotten together and we developed this little social club. It was semi-private, but anyone could join. And, and then get kicked out, yes. Which happened a lot, but... And the, and, the, and the secret society you refer to is, of course, the Whitaker Cocktail Whitaker Society. Cocktail. Not cockbiters, as contrary to popular belief. Sure. Um, but the Cocktail Society, um, which was rather fun. And, you know, we decided at a certain point, getting drunk, you know, doing drugs, being around each other, we should have done a little bit more for the community. So, luckily... What did we wear? Well, we wore... The, the men normally just would wear a t-shirt, tie, and sunglasses. The only addition was isotone gloves for people that identified as female. Um, oh, I didn't know that part. That was, and, well, and same as our cheers, as cheers bitches, and kind, independent females. So Uncle Brad had come up with that in the very beginning, not to offend anyone, you know, because we'd like to take bitches back and have it, you know, strictly being male. Sure. So we included everyone with that. But one of the main reasons that the Whitaker block party was such a success, I would say, is Nikos Ridge. Um, we, we met this gentleman who had this little idea for this um, microbrewery called Vincasi yeah. uh, a long time ago, and he would give us gags, <laughs> and we would have dance parties in our driveway. <laughs> so <laughs> it started, you know, very wholesome. We were doing, you know, traditional dances. And, <laughs> Um, we would have a DJ and yep. piss the neighbors off and have to reposition the Mackies and things like that. But what we were trying to really do was to showcase what the Whitaker House offer. Because we, we came here, you know, I, I mean, I moved here 
26 years ago, lived in the Whitaker about 16 years. But people have been doing Yes, yes. But people have been doing this for a long time. They've been having Whitaker celebrations. The Whitaker has been innovative in all aspects of you know community integration. And we've also been at the forefront from what what works and what doesn't, and that city takes over. So what the Whitaker had to offer at that time really wasn't all the restaurants that are here now. It really wasn't the wonderful beer that we have now. It was a unpolished gem that unfortunately we told too many people. And now that's why you're here, you know. But it, it's good for business, so you know, please drink up, tip your bartenders. Um, but yeah, it was, it was really small. And one of the reasons it worked is nobody got paid. And everyone thought for themselves, everyone bitched and moaned and argued, and, but everyone's voice was just as equally important as the next person. Um, the other part of it too, why over the years the block party has succeeded, is because the Eugene celebration failed. And I think greed and other things happened that, you know, we don't pay any of the musicians that perform. They volunteer all of their time. The money that we get for the block party strictly comes from um, contributions from businesses and from selling vendor space. So we always lose money and we beg, borrow, and steal and, you know, sell drugs just so that we can afford to work the block party. <laughs> Now, looking back and then comparing it to this year's, I know we have this year's hasn't happened yet, but hopefully but it's going to happen. What's what are some of the biggest differences between the first or second rendition and this year's? What's well, happening this year? That's we different? seem to have a lot more businesses that are on the periphery of the block party, which is wonderful. You know, Hot Valley, major contributor. We have Thinking Tree. Um, we'll have Sugar Top Buttery down on the other end, Allen at Territorial. Um, but the, the main thing is, you know, the block party definitely is growing, but our footprint has not grown. We're trying to, one, keep it family friendly, and two, also keep it conducive to not piss off every single neighbor, you know, in the way. Yeah, we'll talk about the, the neighborhood uh, a <laughs> well, little. Who's the guest for that? I, I, um, and before I bring up the panel, um, it's, we can't talk about uh, the block party without talking about Uncle Brad. It's true. Uncle Brad. Yeah. Bradley Coffee was probably one of the main reasons why we had the Whitaker block party. I would Ta say, yeah, if you vision, could. I mean, in the beginning, Uncle Brad, um, Zoe Ridge, and myself, um, we had you know, come up with the Whitaker Cocktail Society. And at that time, we had continued to think about all of, you know, and I, I think Country Fair, I hate to say it and might love to say it, was a huge inspiration for the Block Party. Because when we first moved here, there was no Country Fair in Campbell County, Virginia. So it was very eye-opening. And same as living in the Whitaker, it was super eye-opening. But there was also something we said about people in the Whitaker at that time who couldn't afford to go to the fair or couldn't afford to go to these festivals. And what we wanted to provide is something that was free. I mean, there's free music, and you can bring your kids, and they can listen too, and you can feel safe, and you can go to the kids' zone, and you can get dumped. And I mean, not everyone can get dumped. And we don't have that anymore. And it's only because of Jimbo. But, um, so, you know, in, that was probably also one of the most important aspects of this is we wanted to make it affordable for those that don't have enough. Because we've all been there, we live in this neighborhood, it's full of like-minded souls and awesome and cool people, but not everybody has a lot of money. But they deserve a good time. And they live in this neighborhood. You know, they've been here a lot longer than I have. And it's just nice to be able to provide and give something back. Which kind of sounds weird to say, but it's true. Let's uh, let's bring up our panel here. Yeah, yeah. Let's. Uh, um, we've got some of the original uh, uh, um, uh, organizers and and then um, and some others too. Let's let's bring up uh, uh, Justin Lamphere. All right, Uncle Velvety Bags. There he is. Uh, Uncle yeah. Velvety Bags, they call him. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's also bring up uh, Nikos Rich. Yeah. He's the uh, uh, co-founder of Ninkasi Brewing, and also. Uh, Jason Vandehart, if you would. 
Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Where's Miguel? <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome to the show, and uh, uh, and maybe, actually, if you wouldn't mind joining me in a little toast to, to Brad. There we go. All right. Cheers, uh, bitches. Uncle Brad. Cheers. That's gonna be on uh, on public record. Did you know that? That's, uh, yeah. He has buttons. Yeah, the drug part was a joke. <laughs> Don't worry, nothing is real. <laughs> nothing is real. Welcome to the show, and uh, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about um, the history. Of the, I think everybody sh everybody should have yes, a mic. Yes. Do, do, do. And let's find out if they work. Uh, let's let's do a quick test. And remember, folks, if you have a mic, you want to get it right up in there. That's how that's how it works. Here at Sam Bonds. Yes. There we go. Gentlemen, you guys, you guys got to do a little check there. You got my check. My check. Huh? Yeah. There we go. That's good. Hey, Jamie, you still need my check. I already did. There it is. All right. Somebody shut his microphone off. <laughs> well, um, let's talk about that first. That first block party in the parking lot of Boss Plumbing. <laughs> so I what actually, do you recall? I, I actually wasn't there for this. That's right. You and I weren't there. No, but I, I was requested by Charles Thorley to relay a, a little old story okay. about the first the, block fir party. the very first one. Yeah, it's Charles' first fortieth birthday. Yeah, today, today was his fortieth birthday, and we just came from there and and to not me. To this. He's passed out. Um, probably, um, but he he asked me to relay this story uh, of how him and Gear and Guha um, came to the Whitaker Cocktail Society to per, uh, present the idea for the block party, and everyone was like, "There's no time. There's no time to do this and pull it off, except Miguel." And then those three apparently uh, like like pushed it, and then Chris got on board, and then everyone was just like, it's happening, and it, and it happened. So, and how yeah. how soon before that was, I mean, how soon are we talking about? I, that, did this, how soon did this come together? To me. <laughs> we're talking weeks here? Well, no, we talked about uh, a party with the Cocktail Society. Awesome. I just want to back it up, just yeah. one second. So, Whitaker Cocktail Society was a great social gathering, sticker club, cocktail of the month gathering group of folks that after a certain amount of like, isn't this getting kind of boring, decided to start <clears throat> throwing together events. And first there was a Halloween party, then there was, which was amazing. And yes. that was at Jazz Calsa's shop. Um, okay. Oh, that's right, I remember that. That was, that was, was a lot of fun. Yeah, the Rocktail, the Whitaker Rocktail dead party. Rock Everybody dressed as dead rock stars. Uh, then we, through a New Year's party at the uh, wine cellars off of uh, Madison. That was a great party. That was a great party. Well, Madison, it was both at That the was the first time I heard of Goat and, and, the, and the wine cellar. <laughs> at so, the same time. So yeah, at the same time. Two, yeah. two New Year's parties. I think, right that was, the I think that was the first time I ever heard of Dubstep. And so, <laughs> <laughs> and so it was after that, as the cocktail society get-togethers, which were a little bit more organized. There was an agenda. Rogers rules. Of, um, there was kind of Rogers rules, but there was also the, they who talk the loudest shall win, possibly. But yeah. we had a gavel, and yeah, there lectern, was a gavel. There was a gavel. I the gavel kind of like shut things down, and there was a process in which we decided, as a getting inebriated group of friends, to do things of which there was discussion about a block party of which during one of those meetings it was decided that we weren't going to do the block party. We were going to focus instead on fundraising and do the male bikini car wash. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it was the male bikini car wash in the, the Whitaker Country Club. I think we wanted to do a little putt-putt thing throughout the neighborhood. Different houses would have a course. So do you realize how many notes were in the, the block party files on the male bikini uh, car wash? Yeah, there's a lot. We could probably still pull that up. Yeah, you could probably still pull that out. Not good. as good as we could have then. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> um, 
So it took about six months. That was the first. That was the first one. So it took about six six months of planning to get that first one off the ground. Is that what we're talking about? It was. It was about March. Yeah, it was. About March. We we used. Miguel, where I think he went downtown already. Um, we used Miguel's renter's insurance to kind of cover the official stuff. They were supposed to be on somewhere. Yeah. Now, Nikos, uh, I'm kind of curious because I, I I really don't know what was Nikasi's role in the first uh, in the first couple of years, and how has that changed over the years as far as uh, in support of the blog party? Uh, so first couple of years were integrated with the Whitaker Cocktail Society. So when we moved into the neighborhood, um, we ended up meeting, uh, meeting the crew and uh, our contribution was unlimited free kegs of beer, which got us a pass right through the door for all the meetings <laughs> and uh, <laughs> extracurricular activities. And then yeah, just to Justin's point, we started throwing parties in the neighborhood um, we had a big Halloween party at Ninkasi, and then we had a big Halloween party at Gene Ryan Cellars, and a big Halloween party at Jazz's shop. And so, uh, when the idea was proposed, we were excited about it. And uh, our our main job regarding the block party was just enabling. So, uh, as much as we could provide uh, space and resources and capabilities and it's alcohol, facilitating. that was the oh, facilitating, right. Um, that was our that was our main uh, main position within it. So we did we did lots of fun things like uh, organizing porta potties and uh, trying to work with permits and things like that. Kind of took some back end stuff on yeah. and uh, and then trying to support it. And I think really one of the important things about the block party and uh, you know having grown up in Eugene and I, I still think it's the best party that Eugene's ever created is that it's 100% free and anybody can come. Yeah. And that was the biggest kind of underlying goal that still is true to the block party. And then since then, you know, it's grown. It's grown outside of just, you know, this kind of corner and neighborhood. So there's more people involved and more sponsors. And, you know, we still throw a party at our spot. And uh, there's parties all around the neighborhood now. We still sponsor it. And I think we still sponsor the porta potties as our main, uh, you know, making sure that, yeah, the neighborhood stays clean. And, yeah. Hygiene. That's pretty much yeah. always been the, the main thing that you yeah. sponsor. Yeah, the that, was, that was my life, is the porta potties, block party porta potties. So. You know, I think that uh, uh, culturally across time, I, I feel like the, the 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 thing that is carnival is important to a healthy society. Uh, um, you know, a, a day they set aside for the year where everything's turned upside down, and we and we can do that in a, a few different uh, venues. And uh, but, but like you say, uh, some of these. Um, uh, activities are not, they are exclusive, where where the block party is, is all inclusive. It's, it's kind of, of yeah. yeah. I mean, we have all types of people that come, you know, and there are some very, very interesting elements of the block party, and it just makes it that much richer, and that much more interesting, because when you get this group of people together, you never know what's going to happen. You know, you have spontaneous music. Sure. You have, you know, all good things. Nothing bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, um, well, let's we'll talk about the good things first, but we'll probably delve into some uh, bad some bad things as well. Uh, uh, I I do want to talk about the music. I mean, that is that has been um, the probably the biggest highlight from from the get go. Yeah, that we how many stages are we looking at this year? Well, so you have main stage, which will be at the community council parking lot. You'll have a singer-songwriter stage, which will be like cornerstone event space. You'll have a stage at Nikasi Brewing Company. Um, you'll have a stage also, Uncle Brad's secret stage, which will be in the Not Gossi secret. Mall. Very secret. Uh, it's in the Gossi Mall in, down the alley from uh, where the Tattoo Collective used to be. Uh, there should be a stage across the street at uh, 20 after 4. Uh, Mac at the hostel typically has a stage. Yep. I heard that Sugar Top Buttery is having a stage um, at their new spot on 3rd. And I believe Alan at Territorial will also, um, oh, and Heritage Distillery 
Okay. So Don't forget the G spot. Oh, oh yeah, and my house. Okay. <laughs> Last but not least. And Blair oh, Alley. Yes. Go. 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 Thank you. I'm I mean, we, we what, we're we're probably, we're we're probably we're looking at over 50 acts. Yeah. Oh. I mean, there's no way to catch oh, them. Well, well, well over that, no actually. Way. Like, uh, like, like oh, a couple years ago when there were less stages, there was 100 acts. 100 acts. Like when there were less stages, there was at least a hundred acts going yeah. on. And that's unbelievable. I mean, I can't think of. Yeah, that's. I'm not joking. <laughs> yeah. So the other part of it too is you have a lot of satellite stages and people that throw events. Sure. I mean, which we welcome. You know, as long as it doesn't affect us or you know bring popo down. But um, other than that, that's right. Always and that's something uh, uh, we could speak to is that is that I mean you're responsible for a certain area. Actually, and then there's we're responsible for most of the worker just due to the fact that if the party carries out outside of the footprint, which it does. I thought you were responsible for everything, Chris yeah, Cassidy. Supposedly. But no, we, we really want to make it safe. You know, so we have um, peripheral patrols. We are required to have all this, but we also go the extra step and hire a private security company to help to. So EPD has worked with us over the years. They've been a very expensive, wonderful addition to the block <laughs> And um, they have, they've been really chill because not all police forces have a dial. Most have a switch. And we have really, we, we benefited from the Whitaker being a very unique place. And there's things that go on here that they don't go on everywhere else. But it's also well contained and we're a bunch of like-minded souls. We're all adults. Did you elaborate on that? No. <laughs> but no, it's, it's a very expensive process to be yeah. secure. Well, I, I'd like to talk about... Um, <laughs> your, let's talk about the budget. Hey guys, hey guys, can you talk about how it started? You were out. We yeah, we already did. Yeah, Miguel started the whole thing. And then he went downtown. I want to talk about how your relationship with the city has changed with over the years yeah. and how it how like what was it like at the beginning it, and how has it changed i was pretty brash and i was kind of a dick and i didn't realize how to play the game right and luckily this wonderful woman named colette ramirez came into our life and one i grew up and the two she also was a community liaison um who cultural bring, services. yeah cultural services i can't speak highly enough of uh, colette and the entire team but what they did is they, they showed us how to throw an event. I mean, we, we didn't really know what to do. Like, in the beginning, honestly, Nikos took care of a lot of the permitting. It wasn't something that, you know, was in a toolbox. But it was very difficult. And, you know, it, you have to follow the rules. Sure. You have to do things certain way. And as it continued to get... At there, least follow on... Um, what, what permits did you ever get for the black party that you offered? First two, three years. First two, so, did, like, did we get permits at all? Well, right. Good question. Uh, <laughs> no, no, we, no, yeah, yeah. But, but we, we, then we got. But if anything had happened, it'd been your renter's insurance. Yeah. <laughs> but we did. We went through the street closure permitting process uh, at a certain point. The, the the problem with the block party historical retrospective is uh, they all blend together and it's pretty hazy from the you know planning <laughs> to execution all the way through. But. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I will Eventually, say, you know, I think I think the city started as like we were totally off the radar, yes. and then we started getting a little, a story. yeah, and then we started getting a little bit more on the radar, and oh, then then five thousand people showed up one year, yeah. and they were definitely on the radar, and then it got yeah. real intense, and they I think they tried to shut it down for a couple of years, yeah, yeah. got real intense. They're making on it inspections, so that was kind of battling. Where me and Chris would have to go in and have meetings. 2013 and, and 2014 really were probably it. And the then, most challenging years, and then we kind of like hit the threat. They're like, okay, well, we can't stop it, so we'll join in and then off, I, I and, off and running. I so. time saying, if you don't give me the permits, we're going to do it anyway. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was yeah, 2000. Those were words that were said. Uh, no, that was 2014. You can't stop it. Because of that statement. Now, that was definitely it, 2014. It, it, it is kind of a shared <laughs> evolution, you know, growing pain things. Like, you know, obviously what it started out as was essentially like, uh, a collective and creatively energized excuse to throw a bigger party, 
And, but it's and, really a block party. It wasn't for everybody. Sure. But the, the thing was, was like the city also just hadn't really experienced anything like it either. So to be fair to them, you know, they were kind of like, oh, wow, we're, you weren't on the radar. A bunch of us went down to it. But, and then it kind of evolved, and you know, once it, it's like a, 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 an order of magnitude. Sure. Once it gets to did, a certain size. Did the city well, ever try to take it over, uh, or, or, or um, you know, did they will, let me, let me, I will say one thing though, because I think, well, so, I think this is important, I think this is important. And this is something that I learned through the whole process too, is it's very gray and very hard to regulate something that's free. Yeah. Right. Where nobody's yeah. actually well, doing commerce. So, so, so they keep trying to put all these barriers up, and we're like, no, well, sure. I mean, I guess this is people are going to go out in their neighborhood and party, and you know, <laughs> and we don't have a permit. I don't well, know. There's nothing really that we can do to stop that. Two, 2013 and 2014 were, in my opinion, the, the roughest years for the block party. Um, like in 2014, I'm on the news talking about how. We, me, Chris, and Zoe Ridge had emailed the city like in January and repeatedly emailed them for months and months and months and they did not get back to us to even discuss the issue until two weeks before the block party in July. Oh my God. That was the most difficult year. And like right before I was on the news, they finally got back to us and they're like, well, we'll maybe do it if you do it all on Blair. Chris, you could probably speak uh, most of this. What's your relationship with the city now? Oh, it's great. Oh. Yeah, they, after that, they, after 2014, they loved us. We had a meeting. Um, I do whatever they tell me. Um, we keep the event free. It just keeps getting more expensive every year. Uh, the only thing, basically, you're trying to do is we're improving the safety. Um, having an event right. um, in a neighborhood like this, it draws in people from outside the neighborhood. Don't always follow our neighborhood. respect the respect Even the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah like the like us, the residents do. So to keep it free and family fun, you know, we we go to Great Lakes. We do a lot of pre-planning. We have a lot of permitting that happens. We have an extremely yes, we need a lot of sponsors. Any San Bonds are sponsors this year. Be awesome. Um, but no, what what we do is we just continue to to hone our craft. I mean, 13 years. We figured a few things out, and yeah. then, you know, we, we don't advertise in the Eugene Weekly because they're too expensive, and <laughs> we just keep it word of mouth. I mean, social media is kind of the thing these days, and also we don't want to bring everybody here. You know, we don't want it to get that much bigger. We want it to still be able to be in the neighborhood and to be welcomed in the neighborhood because um, it is free. I mean, I, I don't know any other free events. Where you can go, bring your kids, drink some booze, hang out, have a good time, and see all your neighbors. What's the future of the block party? Bleak. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Damn. We're actually we're selling it, so it's for sale. Um, we'll take all offers. Is, is that true? No. No, is it? <laughs> uh, I mean, that's the same thing as the. This is the last block party, I'll which buy is it. the joke for like ten years. Now it, we're gonna keep it the same way. We're gonna keep it small. Um, if the sale of the, <laughs> um, if we're going to keep it small, um, we're going to have to be inventive. Um, thank you, thank you, Uncle. Oh well, that's good. Um, where's the main stage? Where's mine? Which has moved, <laughs> moved over the years. It really has. It's moved quite a few times. It has. Uh, Tony's lot over here. We had it in the middle of the street in front of Minkasi. But we may lose the parking lot for the public parking, so I don't know what we're going to do next year. We may have satellite stages and spread it out a little bit. But the other part of the block party, too, is if you, if you want to get involved and you feel like I'm not going to piss you off or I'm a complete dick, help us out. We would That's love, asking a lot. Yeah, it, it is asking a lot. So I actually have something to say on that. I think that the single <laughs> biggest struggle... You would. Yeah, I would. <laughs> the single biggest struggle uh, during my time is secretary uh, was always never so ever so ever so having much. enough volunteers yeah and, and that is the perpetual story of the block party is Everybody not having enough volunteers that's just, have to do anything. Yeah. But i think that's true with all uh i mean with all nonprofits. yeah uh the getting the 
I know you're not a nonprofit, but you act like one. Well, not, not, not for profit LLC. Yeah, they're not for profit. Yeah, but 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 that but but seriously though, I mean, uh, volunteer uh, retention is always an issue. That's always going to be an issue. It's almost impossible. Yeah. I mean, we have some solid some people that are there every single year, but it's really tough. You can't boss volunteers. You know, you're just giving free sure. tickets. So. T-shirts. Typically, volunteer attention and sobriety has been more than yeah. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, in a moment, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna put on a GoPro, and I'm gonna go out into the audience and uh, do, have no some GoPro? Q and A for for the, for our panel. But also, will you grab me a drink? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's re that's that's really the motivation for me to go out there in the audience. Um, Oh, good. Um, don't call to Andrew. Well, yeah, I, don't worry. I wasn't going to. <laughs> don't call on Andrew. Uh, before I do, though, because uh, I want to talk. I want to talk to the audience. I want them. I want them to have some questions for our panel. Maybe also share some uh, some favorite stories or some concerns. Well, and our neighbors, Dan and Rachel, also were a huge part of, you know, not. They were the after party? Yeah, having the yeah. after party. The so kids zone? Putting up with my antics when I used to break yeah. glass in the street. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But before I go out there, I was hoping maybe we could go down the panel, maybe start with j and come this way. Uh, your favorite moment in, oh. the, in this past 12 years? Oh, it's, e it's easily the 2014 block party where we had to overcome every struggle in the book we, like me, Chris, and Zoe, and, and Anna and Bray uh, ordered special uh, like tank tops just for us, and we got that, and then and then overcame every obstacle that the city put in front of us. Pulled off a block party that went wonderfully. It was probably one of the smoothest block parties in the history of the block party. And then after that, they were like, "Okay, cool, you guys, you're, you guys are rad." You that's, in that's the nice club, idea. yeah. yeah. No, that's cool. That was the Yeah. I was always concerned. No, everything went really well that year. Like the sweep went really well. Everything, everything. That 2014 was just like it came together after fighting for like a half a year. So that was like six years into it. Yeah. Is that right? Something like that. Like six, seven years. Uh, she. Uh, to paraphrase. Uh, you, uh, you, because uh, some people wanted to know what you said out here in the audience, and uh, I, and, we'll, and we'll we'll grab you in a second if you, unless you want to. Oh, she okay. concurred that, that it was a, a very smooth and very and felt very comfortable. Specifically, and, the the midnight show that she was throwing. Uh, it was the first year she felt completely comfortable throwing the midnight show. So yeah. Nikos, what was your favorite moment from the past uh, twelve years of uh, 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 the block party? Uh, details are hazy, but generally, uh, especially early on, I mean, it was such a great, just fun energy to put it together. But I, what I always actually really enjoyed a ton was the uh, Sunday cleanup, because there's a lot of people who will volunteer to, like, put it all together and work day of and all that, but it's kind of the core crew that shows up on Sunday morning to do what it takes to shut it down and keep the party going and have a little bit more fun while you're kind of reminiscing and cleaning stuff up and uh, and those were always kind of like the, the glory moments. I, all of it was fun, but that was kind of what brought it all back together with those uh, Sunday mornings. Yep. And and that's I, I, I'm I'm gonna say this now because I I'll, I I don't want to forget. Um, should somebody in the audience feel like volunteering? And we just talked about how hard it is to get volunteers. I'm guessing you still need some volunteers, Chris. Yes, we do. <laughs> how would how would a person in the audience tonight um, talk to you about to volunteering? My girlfriend Annika, or you could express interest. Yeah. Um, at M-R-G-A-D-S-B-Y at gmail.com. <laughs> but um, we, we can get a sign-up sheet, but this isn't an advertisement for the Wicker no. Party. This is just history, right, Tim? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, screw the party. But it's all about the history. <laughs> Justin, how about your favorite uh, memory in the past uh, decade anymore? Uh, well, I'll just give you like a vignette. 
um, there was one time making sure that people were, when we were, we did not have Van Buren closed off and cars could travel through and we had music at Nkasi and block party on this side and just making sure that people crossed the street without getting hit by the train. Though I think later on somebody did get hit by the train, but just glanced. That was a, that was a memory. I'm That's your favorite memory? I said Somebody I was given a vignette. That was one of the vignette. <laughs> Another one of the vignette is, is um, the actually first year playing music. Block party would kind of consolidate down all the stages to the main stage ultimately, and having both Charles and Sean playing music up on top of the main stage in the Ninkasi parking lot, hitting the official 10 o'clock, no more sound, uh, city ordinance, and then looking over to Nikos and him kind of going, you know what, it's cool, everybody in the neighborhood is here right now. And that was a great one. So what do you guys think about Wade Love helping you out with this year uh, block party? Wade who? Wade is great. Wade is great. <laughs> now here we he host the country party. So. Chris, what was your favorite moment in the uh, block party in the last decade or so? I think I have to agree with because all of the ones in the beginning have ended together. So they're like a slight montage. The, the thing that has, I guess, come back this year that was one of my favorite moments was the fashion show. Um, one, the fashion show is incredibly sexy and incredibly awesome and debaucherous, but it is something different. You know, it's art. And it's not just music that we're, we're showcasing. We're showcasing all of these people's talent, fabric art, um, you know, any type of art that they have. And I think that the fashion show is something that this year was one of my favorites in years past. And I can't remember the last fashion show we had, but I remember it was sexy as hell. And this year, I think it's going to be just as good. And thank you, Rachel, for helping us. <laughs> yeah, she's bottom line. I also want to point out that that was one of Uncle Brad's Yeah, Brad was into the from fashion show. And Aiden, also. Yeah, he does. Um, yeah. yeah um, Olive Juice was a huge part of more, yeah, the, the fashion show getting the fashion, fashion show going. Yeah. I've hosted, I've uh, emceed the fashion show a couple years, and after the last one, I said I'd never do it again. Perfect. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what about this year? Uh, who knows? Uh, I'll, ju I'll just quick. I'll share one of my favorite mom my favorite one from the. Uh, I used to have a booth every every year for booze week. Booze week booth. And uh, one year we did the, the Booze Week coin toss, and we, had, we got uh, glassware from all the neighbors. In, in, and uh, now you could bring your own quarters, or you could purchase three quarters for a dollar. And you could, and, and, uh, it was a great deal. Yeah, and it was a great deal. And, uh, and, and there was one fella who said, oh, look at this, here's, a, here's an yeah. old Booze Week Volume 1 issue. No. Seven, August 2008, special edition, <laughs> your unofficial guide to the Whitaker blog party. Wow. Look at that. It was four pages. The, the text gets smaller what, and smaller. What, what year was this? Elliot's crying. <laughs> if you're cool, you'll bring a few cans of food to donate to Food for Lane County and help out your neighbors who could use it they the most. They didn't want to help us anymore because those donation barrels look like trash cans. <laughs> so everybody used them as a trash can and Food for Lane County stopped wanting us to donate. The only like nonprofit that wouldn't want us to contribute to it all. Check Mayor Kitty so, Piercy will be here. And she did some terrible rapping. Already. And so will Axel Rose and Kevin from the Wonder Years. Yeah, and Aerosmith. Okay, I made those last two up, but you should still come. And bring your non Whitaker living friends, too. We'd love to meet them. Well, not the douche bros, but all the other ones. Like. Unfeignedly yours, Ellie Martinez. There it is. <laughs> Unfavorably. All right, let's, let's do this. Any questions? Let's, we're about to do some, uh, some crowd work. You should get them before they all leave. Are, are we on? Are yes. we? Okay. 
Hey, uh, I want to thank uh, I thank our panel. Please stay up here, and I'll make sure to get any, any of you guys some drinks. Anybody need some drinks up here? No, no, I already got one. What do you drink? Uh, I'll have a margarita with salt. On margarita there. with salt on the rim. Sure. Two of those, and whatever I'm drinking. All right. Hey, uh, please, a big round of applause for our panel here tonight. All right. Hey. Did you bring that guy? Is he your date or something? What is this? Is? Andrew, shut up. Found him at a rodeo. Not a shut up. We're Eskimo brothers. All right, here. This is the part of the show where I go around into the audience and uh, and and I invite you to ask our panel some questions about the history of the Whitaker uh, Block Party, or uh, or maybe even share a story of your own. Uh, in the years that have gone by. And so here I go, I'm coming around it. All you have to do is raise your hand and I'll come over to you. Uh, keep in mind, I am videotaping you with my brain. Uh, we All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Carter Johnson. Uh, yeah, uh, so I love the Whitaker Block Party. Oh my God, it's been just like so many crazy things. I just remember like uh, one of the early ones. I remember... Uh, we were like, there was like a boom box and a circle of people in the street and everyone's like doing their fancy dance inside the circle, you know? And I really liked it when everybody had their own little, their own little thing, like people at their own houses, like, like by, behind your house. That was really cool. I wish there was more of that. But my question is, um, is it a man thing? Is it like, is it like men hosting this party for us? I mean, it's awesome, you know? I mean, the patriarchy, the patriarchy never looks so good, you know? I mean, you appreciate it, but is it, I mean, what's, yeah, what's... where are the women up there? Come so, on. so actually, actually, that's a, I think, a very good question. That is a um, great question. Then. So, <laughs> in, in my opinion, actually, there were initially more women involved. Uh, we actually told them that... Like, um, we invited Mitch McConnell, but he didn't want to show so, up. So, so early, early on, I, I feel like it was, like, Aiden and Zoe and Rachel and and Jules who are like very heavily involved in organizing this. It's just and, and Yes, Holly. And Holly, yes, and Holly, who can forget Holly. I think there was a lot of women driving the early years of the block party. It's just unfortunately getting this panel together, either some of them were just unavailable or, you know, doing other things or not even in this town anymore. Apparently, a bunch of white guys have enough to free time on a Saturday to come and sit and do a block a party question. retrospective. <laughs> yeah. That's about it. Sure. Yeah. Wanda's got it right. Yeah. We're ready. Get on, guys. Get on. All right, who, uh, does anybody else have a question for the panel? Oh, that guy, over there, oh, let's go ahead. While you're circulating over there, I, I do want to add, though, to what J-Van said, like, uh, and what Wanda was just saying. I would say that there is more females who are making the real shit actually happen than there were the guys actually I'm, making yeah, well, that. I mean, just didn't want to get up on stage. The guys when, could like wave their hands around a bunch. When, when I came on board the block party, it was Zoe doing a lot of the like really nitty gritty stuff and she, she brought me on as her assistant. I was I was Zoe's assistant. And like I, I was there Zoe's to like back up Zoe, and, and yeah, yeah, you used to call me Zoe's little bitch. That, that is true. <laughs> we got, true. we got a question over here. Yeah, Amy Wolpock and we have Auntie Clifford. Right. Yeah, we got a question over here. All right. Um, will uh, Game Show be making an appearance at Block Party? Who's this? Who? Game Show. What's your name, sir? What? I'm sorry. What's know. the question? I don't know. He doesn't know his name, but he wants to know if uh, if Game Show will be making an appearance at Block Party. The answer is no. I'm sorry, that's not. Oh, that is that is incorrect. Incorrect. All right. Anybody else will have a question for the for the panel, or maybe uh, maybe I will say I'll just add while you're walking around to find somebody to a ask a question. Though going back to it, like in what you were saying, uh, Zoe earned her. You know, Stripes. effortlessly earned her name as her nickname moniker from the Cocktail Society as Auntie Little Miss Matriarch. She was the one that really 
kind of took control, made sure things were happening while some people were not around, and you know, just it was a lot of her mainly. I mean, you're you're yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that, that's definitely <laughs> true, and I mean, that's that's why it was brought on as her little bitch. You're my favorite pen pal, Chris Gatsby. Now, something we didn't talk about was maybe some of the concerns about the neighborhood uh, and, and what the Blonde Party brings to it. Uh, does anybody have something they want to speak to that nature? You find somebody sleeping in your front yard crawling out. If you, if you find somebody in your front yard and they've fallen asleep, throw them out. Wake them up. Yeah, wake them up first, then throw them out. Hydration. Give them a beer or a cup of coffee, even. Probably a beer. I did have Lefty throw some guy out of my booth that, like, crash landed there. <laughs> Rachel's got something to say over here. Uh, so, when the block party first started, my sister and I were like, oh, to encourage everybody to do like a sweep. And everybody at this point is tired, they're wasted, and they're like, Rachel, it's fine, no, we're through. I've like peeled people's faces out of the gravel in the driveway next to me and like tried to escort them to their friends. Um, but a funny story, the second year, and the first year as well actually, there happened to be incidents where something very close to the boundary of the black party happened and the police were called. So all of a sudden at like 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, as I'm sitting there going like, God, when is everybody gonna leave? What are we gonna be responsible for here? All of a sudden it's sirens and lights and it was just like, <laughs> no one was around. And I was like, how can we get that to happen every year at like 10, 45? Um, Tell them the cops are coming. Yeah, right? Rachel, I think my favorite memory of your after parties was one morning having to roll some people out of the middle of 3rd Avenue. Um, and they were in their sleeping bags just in the middle of 3rd Avenue. And I, me, me and I think it was Trent, rolled them out of the middle of the street. Has, has that changed at all? I mean, it, Oh, definitely. In the last couple of years, have we had that many more people who kind of just passed like out in the in people's yards? No. Yeah. That's why we don't have it for two days. Thank you. Yeah. Bring yeah. me in yeah. the office, and we're trying to have it for two days. Yeah, we thought like, well, all this setup and all that. I mean, once you do all the work, you can just keep it going. But yeah, I definitely yeah. always kept it one day. One day. They're already there. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Did you did you have a question for our panel, or maybe a story to share? First of all, I want to thank everybody for doing this. Like, I've been welcome to Open Arms this neighborhood. Chris, you're a good man, and you guys are. It's a cool thing for the community. Everybody, it's a it's a righteous, righteous, righteous party. My question for the panel is, what can people do to help? If people want to help, if people want to contribute and volunteer, like you know, what can we reiterate on that? We talked about it a little bit earlier, but let's reiterate. I mean, if you want to contribute, please help us out with your volunteer hours. The other thing too is. If, for some reason, you have some form of craft in your yard, you're going to have a, like 500 people that come to our neighborhood, and they're going to walk through the neighborhood, so sell your shit in your front yard. Make some money. Make some money off these people, please. It's the show us what the Whittaker has to offer. We're not trying to make money. Why don't you all make some money? You know? Like, don't listen to me. I, I think uh, one of the most important things that the block party sh constantly struggles with, at least, I mean, I haven't been part of it for two years, but I think one of the biggest things that, that the block party has traditionally struggled with is just having people there to, like, greet people at the gates um, and having them there reliably. Like, if you just want to donate two hours of your time, like, it's super helpful to the block just party. Just say hi. Yeah. If you have a t-shirt on, be a cool human. Yeah, always, if, if you're wearing that shirt, an always be cool. Be an ambassador. Always. You, you want to be an ambassador for, for all the good shirt on, you are an ambassador for our community and for this event. Exactly, that's exactly it. Like, we want people to be appropriate in our neighborhood. 
I mean, they, they come here year-round. It would be nice if it could be appropriate at least one day out of the year. Yep. All right. Does anybody else have anything they want to add to the conversation? Oh, over there in the back. There's, and then there's, and we'll, we'll get, but this one will come right back to you, sir. Here we go. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I was in the block party uh, when it first started. I was a teenager. I'm sorry, what? I was a teenager when the block party first started, and I remember, you know, the cocktail, the club, the cocktail club, and really as a woman, you could not get in to that kind of power, that power note that's sitting right in front of me right now, no offense, and as much as we are thankful for the block parties. Uh, you couldn't get in unless it was, you were, you know, as a woman, you were one of the partners, or fucking one of the guys, I mean, or the friends of the guys, like, it was really, it was really kind of, well, it was, it was. Wait, hold on, you were a teenager when this was going on, so you were like underage. I was 18, 19 years old, actually. It might be 21 to be in the Whitaker Cocktail Society, so. Yeah, but That's I mean. That's why you were excluded. It wasn't because you were a woman. Yeah, sure. Okay, fair enough. But well, most I mean, of the member. I, I, I've read over the, the roll call of the Cocktail Society, the vast majority of the members were actually women. Yeah, but. They were women. Yeah. Regardless, the party seemed to have been started largely. I mean, it was it was largely a bro bro party, and there were there were females that were associated with you guys, partners, friends. I, I think that's an outside perspective. And since you were a teenager at, at that time, I think you're formulating other thoughts. But well, we I mean, you. I mean, the bottom time. line is, I mean, where are the women and the people of color up on stage right now? Where are they? Well, they didn't where have they been? Here. We can't no, they, people literally, they did not want to get up here. Uh, I, I contacted all of the, the women and the people of color uh, who were, were members. There's actually, so Miguel is floating around here somewhere, and he's over there. And, and there's Wade, too. I contacted all of them. Most of the women did not want to be up here. Miguel totally... But there's no reason for us to defend ourselves. You, you're just wrong. And your information is erroneous. So I'm really sorry, but we would love to explain to you all of the people that are members of the Whitaker Cocktail Society, but some of them have babies and different lives, and you know, they can't hang out on a Saturday night party with us like we could. We were the only ones that we could get together right now, so this is the best you got. And it had nothing to do with the representation or makeup of the originators, it just had to do with timing and who was available. So for this and and also, it, it, it may or may not here, so it, it I, may oh, it may or may not be demographically balanced up here or generally however the Whitaker block party and I think I talked a little bit about this earlier is probably the most inclusive event that Eugene has ever created at Throne because from a socioeconomic spectrum no one's excluded from any kind of spectrum, no one's excluded. It's it kind of all free comers. neighborhood party. Anyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome. Everybody comes and has a great time. Well, and throughout the and organization history of it, like there have been. I mean, the, the foot traffic is different from the people driving the party and, well, and, and, and leading the party. Well, I think, I think well the, the only people who can drive inclusivity are people who aren't. Uh, able to create that situation, it would be a very difficult circumstance. So, so for it, throughout the, the history of the block party, like women have led the block party, men of color have uh, uh, led the block party, queer men have been involved with the, the, the major organization of the block party right here, and so like there's been a lot of diversity within the block party, despite the fact that Eugene is what 83 percent white. So. I don't know. I, it seems more inclusive than other festivals that get thrown in this town. Compared to Eugene Celebration, Country Fair, uh, like literally name it, Fairy Fest. I mean, there are people of color and, and queer folk and women involved in all those things too. But we'd be happy to have you as far as here. what it all is in awesome. this small group of people. Like, I, I think that's a pretty diverse demographic of having multiple men of color, many, many women. More women have been involved in this uh, organization than men have, period. And then, like, queer men as well. Like, I mean, like, like I, I just, yeah, what, what, what are we looking for here? This, yeah, this does go, yeah, it goes, goes back to what Karu brought up earlier, and, and, and it's hard to hear what you guys are saying from, a, it's from a, an all male, all white cast up here. Yeah, and, and but no, but well, either might so. <laughs> but but 
but but true. Uh, it, it's hard to hear that. And and but uh, but you 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 are right. I do recall the the Whitaker Cocktail Society days, and it was driven by women, and then it was um, very much very inclusive. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, uh, thank you very much for your question. Uh, Dan- also, fifty percent of the Wicker Block Party LLC is Annika Pass, who she identifies as a woman, and Chris <laughs> me. So, I don't know. I mean, we had 50-50. we had a question over here. I wanted to get to this fellow. Here we go. Wait, what did you identify as? Chris, motherfucking again. Oh, is that person. I don't have so much of a question, but just a strange take on the Block Party. But I've been living across from Cocktail Society and Gatsby and Brad when he was here and the house was on West Third for a long time and Rachel and I shared a house on West Third for a long time and saw the party grow up and I missed the first year I was out on tour out of town. But every other year, it's total magic. These people are all kind of next level individuals, strangely evolved and it's been a rad time every year I've been there. There have been times though. One year I tried to hide my house behind a bunch of mirrored uh, paper. It didn't work. <laughs> One year I left town because I was paranoid. It's a big deal opening your door and seeing 1,500, 2,000 people in your front yard. And some days I'm ridiculously proud of that day when it happens. And other days I'm terrified and I want to find a shady, cool place to hide. I'm always proud of what it happened. What happens at the party? I think it's amazing every year, and organizationally speaking, ridiculous amounts of work going into it. And I've seen maybe three unsavory things happen. Um, primarily a long time ago, one of the first years, it was 100 degrees and 100% humidity, and I remember, you know, at the kids' zone, it was by the dunk tank in front of West Side Garage family of three with two kids rolling up with a 24 pack of beer and it's like wow that's not exactly it but every other year it's been you know my kids have grown up in front of the block party and with the block party and um, and other neighbors kids and Tim's daughter and all of their friends and it's been a wonderful event just for me personally it's always been really intimidating and I know, you know, Rachel, my ex, she does not have the same opinion. She latches onto it the same way that these gentlemen do, but for me, a whole different cup of tea. And I don't know if I'm alone in that opinion, but um, I came here before the neighborhood was what it is now. And it was dark and dank and a little dodgy, but it was also 100% free, as in freedom. And that is the other element about the block party that I really appreciate is all the people that have manifested all of those cultural ideas and ideas about being an artist and elaborated on them to have this become what it is. Yeah, Dan. And Dan Schmidt is the only reason that I have the G spot other than way love. So I, I have to say thank you very much to Dan. Here we go. Love. Back to Carrie Johnson over here. I know I stirred I stirred I stirred the pot there, but uh, no, but you good. know I this year I went to the Oregon Country Fair and uh, camped out there and whatnot. Went, to, went around at night. Was it free? And I, and I was so bored. I was I was bored out of my <laughs> mind. And then nothing. And then I and then I I, I got up I got up on Saturday morning and I was like I don't have to be here and I and I packed all my shit and went home. And I'm just saying that. Like I am so excited about the blog party. I just think it is like the it is so wild. It's like truly wild. It's like a fair old party. I mean, the Oregon Country Fair just seems like totally domesticated to me. And uh, when when everybody comes to the neighborhood and everybody like flies their own their own thing, their own style. I mean, it's just uh, it's really too. It's like carnival and and I just feel like we're dealing with like primal energies of 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 like a potential human and. I appreciate all the work, and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kari. It means a lot. Thank you very much, Kari. Like you, but, you know, the other always a badass. Too is there's nothing here that we have created that's new. What we are doing is the same thing that has been done in the Whitaker by different groups: the anarchists, the hippies, the artists, the people from our Latino community. All of these communities have been doing these things for years. What we did was we are an amalgamation of these things because they influence 
influenced us tremendously by being a part of this wonderful fabric of this community. It influenced every single one of us. It has changed this community. I mean, we have restaurants and breweries and all these other things, but we also have, you know, artist enclaves. We have uh, the, the place that you live. We have a co-op. We have, I mean, this is a fucking incredible place. And it's really shitty that we're telling everybody about it. Because they want to be part of it. So you know, they, I mean, this is, yeah, this is real. But this is real community. We're not going to Burning Man to fucking be a community. We're like walking down the street saying, look, I got to people. And that's the type of party that we're having. Because it's only <laughs> the Whitaker block party, because we're in the Whitaker. We're with all of these people who are our neighbors and friends and have been here for years and have been doing it for a long time. That's who we pay homage to, the people that were here before. Sunshine at um, the... Icky. Yeah, at Icky's. I mean, who the fuck did that? Nobody. You know, but all of these things were the reason why this succeeds, because of those people before. And we're honored to be in this fucking neighborhood, 100%. So, so the, I, I think there's something I, I think is really cool about the block party, and that it's remained free, and that nobody gets paid. Always will be. And like no, and 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 it's and like honestly, like I mean, I when when I left the block party, like it was largely due to the fact that like, oh, I'm working from July. Jason and I broke up, but we're still friends. Yeah, so. yeah. But but I was working from, from January to fucking August for like a full, almost a full-time job trying to like help this party happen and like that was vol all volunteer time I never got paid for any of that and I just I, I got it since I've left I have to just give you some props Chris like no matter what this entire time from the very beginning to today you've made sure that no one gets paid and it's free yeah. and the, the very credo so that the people. block party started on you held for a does anyone have a copy of the Whitaker Block Party mission statement? Um, it's actually on the Block Party web website. It should be. Yeah. I think that would be a great thing to read. It's at the front. Oh, actually, you know what? Real quick, I also have to give a shout out to uh, Aaron Moore Chopsikins for all the art he's done over the many fucking years of Block Party. Like all the posters, and all this stuff that you see, he designed. Um, and, and, and like he like for years and years and years, this man just gave himself to the block party like ridiculous amounts of design hours, like 80, 100 hour weeks just to make this stuff happen for like what? Like 10 years almost? Somewhere out there. There he is. Okay, here is our mission statement. Oh, well, we got the mission statement right over here. It's on a big old... Uh, Piece of foam core. Here we go. Let's hold it up there and check it out. Oh, I gotta read it. Somebody read it. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, just turn it that way, just a tiny bit. There you go. Seeking to preserve and enhance the social fabric of the Whitaker neighborhood, engaging in merriment and exploring within the pathways winding across the moral spectrum. <laughs> That's nice. Oh, we seek to foster communities through our libations. Our celebrations, our pop-up driveway dance parties by partnering with and promoting the creative pulse in our neighborhood. Well, I think you've done just that. Uh, congratulations. And I think it's worked. I mean, you know, as an entity that is not making any money or wanting to make money, all we want to do is continue and we want to be able to provide. So. I don't know, all the things that are going on around us, the new restaurants that are coming in, all of the changes in our community, has nothing to do with us. It's you know, strictly gentrification. But the Whitaker Block Party will always remain free. Well, I wish uh, the 13th Annual Whitaker Block Party a good year and then uh, and many years to come. I want to thank our panelists and our, our newest panelists, Rachel. There, you are. there she is, right there. Thank you very much. Oh, Rachel. Uh, and Chris Cassidy over here, Nico's Bridge, and then uh, uh, Jason Van Hart, and I think... Uh, uh, also, Justin, also Justin, Justin fell over, uh, and then uh, and and of course our audience here tonight. I want to thank you all very much, and uh, and and right here at uh, uh, Sam Bond's garage. Thank you so much for helping us, sir. Sam Bond's bartenders. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
this this is this is Tim Lewis. And I just want to say he has been one of the most influential role oh, models. Oh, I'm gonna man, dude. Hey, whatever. <laughs> no, if, if it wasn't for this motherfucker, a lot of this wouldn't happen. And I am very thankful to, you know, for Tim Lewis. Go Tim! Oh, thank you very much. Now, if you haven't had a chance to already, and you would like to, you can uh, you can donate at the front here. All, all the proceeds go to making sure that uh, Whitaker Tales keeps happening. We've got a couple more uh, in the works already, and in fact, uh, the next one I'm very excited about, and I, we're looking at September, it's uh, music that has come out of the Whitaker. That's the topic. And I think that's going to be an excellent show, and that's sometime in September. Um, I don't re remember the date. Just look for it on the, <laughs> on the marquee outside. That's how it works. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful vlog party. My name is Elliot Martinez, and thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you around. Thank you very much. Cheers, bitches. Cheers, Cheers bitches. Cheers, and kind independent females. And kind independent females. Oh my god, I got that handshake, too. <laughs> <laughs> An hour and a half? Okay, cool. An hour and a half, an hour and a half should be enough. Like, our, our block party is a lot of fun. We've got a lot of beautiful, good people, lots of kids, lots of, uh, you know, family here. And uh, it's just nothing like it, man. You're in the, you in the, 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 and because the Whitaker Cocktail Society, you know, like, decided to really get this going, man. Uh, it's like, there's nothing like it, man. And Eugene or this whole area here. And that's why there's so many people, man, coming to this thing every year. You know, we're having a lot of fun, and even as hot as it's been all day. You know? Frickin' humidity. Yeah. Feels like you're back in the jungle, huh, Scott? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, both me and James, man, we're in the Nam, man. You guys are both in the Nam? Yeah. <laughs>